What's going on, mobile gamers? Today I'm going to show you guys how to play some GameCube on your Odin 2. Let's jump in and up our gaming knowledge. Alright gamers, so we're going to learn how to play some GameCube on our Odin 2. And I'm going to show you a game that requires a little bit of tweaking to make it work okay. First thing we're going to do is go to Chrome, type in Dolphin Emulator. Then you're going to go to Dolphin Emulator or dolphin-emu.org. Right at the top, you're going to go to Download. Now you're going to exit the ad and you're going to scroll down. Now you're going to see either the beta build that is three months old as of today, or you're going to see the development builds that are only hours old. So they are continuously developing and fixing things and making things work better for multiple different platforms. So sometimes you might see, hey, we fixed something for Android or we fixed something for Windows or Linux or Mac or whatever. Now that being said, the latest build as of today is 20360. So we're going to click on the little Android icon and download it. Now it says download again, and that's because I already have it downloaded to my downloads folder. So once you have that downloaded in your downloads folder, you're going to navigate to your downloads folder, click it, click install, and then we're going to be on our way to set it up. Now enable usage stat statistics reporting. We're going to click no. We're going to go add games. This isn't a video to show you how to add games or get games. Internet archives is good for that. That's all I'm going to say. Create a folder, name it GameCube, name it Nintendo GameCube, whatever you'd like, and then navigate to that folder and select use this folder. Click allow. Now, this is where we're going to set up our GameCube buttons. This is how I like it set up based off of how the GameCube controller looks. You can set it up however you want, but I'm going to set it up this way. So first, we're going to go to our settings cog, which is our little gear icon. We're going to go into GameCube input. We're going to go to settings. And then you're going to scroll down and you're going to select your buttons. So I like my button A to be B, my button B to be Y, my button X to be A my button Y to be X. My button Z, I like it to be my back button, which is my M2. Start and select are pretty straightforward. There's no select button on a GameCube controller, by the way. Control stick, of course, that's gonna be whatever control stick you wanna use. If you're lefty, use your right one, righty, left one, whatever, it's up to you. But I'm gonna be using my left one. So left, down, up, and right. Now, if you ever run into this issue, that's because it's not recognizing it right away. So just try to wait a second and let it do its thing. The next thing is your C stick, which is your up, down, left, and right, basically arrow buttons. So we're going to go up, down, left, and right. Now we're going to go to our triggers, L, R, L, R, and those are your R2 and L2, which is your L analog and R analog buttons and then our d-pad we're going to set that up pretty straightforward pretty simple the gamecube controller isn't too crazy now i like to turn my motor off because i find the vibrate too intense so i'm going to actually click on that motor click clear and that motor is going to be turned off if you want to leave your motor turned on then go ahead and do so go to graphics settings go to statistics and click show FPS. Now this is just gonna show your FPS counter on the top right hand side whenever you're playing a game. And I'm gonna show you this just because I wanna show you what we're going to do to fix this game right here in particular. Now we're gonna configure the graphics settings. First, we're gonna go to the settings cog. We're gonna go to graphics. We're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says GPU driver. We're going to install the driver. I put the link in the description below for this driver. This is the turnip driver, which is the latest driver for us to actually use and handle a lot of the rendering of the games pretty well. So again, I have this in my Switch driver files because that's the driver that I use for Switch as well. So I'm going to select turnip 24, which is the latest one as of today. So that will install a custom driver for the GPU. Enhancements. This is where we can change our internal resolution. Most games will render really well at two times resolution and look great on this little device. You can try 3x resolution for a lot of games if you want, but I recommend just using it at two times and that's just my eyes seeing what I like to see. Now this is also where you can find widescreen hacks. I'm not going to enable this. It also tells you, hey, this might break some games and 
I don't recommend it. Now we're gonna go back, we're gonna go to hacks, and we're going to turn on skip EFB access from buffering on the CPU. If you wanna look into it more, you can go to the website, dolphin-emu.org, and look into what a lot of this stuff means. It actually has a little description below, ignores any requests from the CPU to read and write to the frame buffer, or the embedded frame buffer. Now, we're gonna go back again, and we're gonna to go to config. We're gonna scroll down to advanced. I like to turn on the override CPU clock speed. Now, what it says is basically higher values can make the frame rate, or basically variable frame rate games run at higher frame rates requiring a powerful device. Now, we have a powerful device. Lowering these values make games run at lower frame rates, so basically the FPS will be lowered, and it'll increase the emulation speed to handle running these games. Now, again, this device is pretty powerful. Some devices require this, and some games require this. So if you notice that your game is slugging, then you can lower the frame rate a bit, but a lot of GameCube games don't have this issue. It's mostly Wii that I've noticed, and on lower end devices, some games need to be actually overclocked. So our emulated clock speed is at 100%, now, if you came here from Wii and you've already set up Wii, I told you to bog it down to 60%, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm always going to set this to 60% because most of these games aren't demanding enough to actually need this setting to be changed. Now, 100%, again, like I said, if you want to leave it at 100%, what this does is just basically making the games run a little bit harder but 60% makes it run a little bit easier, and I've never noticed any uh, dips in any frames or anything at running 60%. Now, I'm going to show you a game that does need to be set to 100% at all times. That is the Zelda Collector's Edition, which is on the right-hand side there. You're going to long press on this game. You're going to go to Edit Game Settings. Now, this is going to set a configuration file for that game, and it's going to save it no matter what you do, unless you delete Dolphin, of course. So you're going to go click config, go all the way down to advanced, and you're going to turn that back up to 100%. And some games require this because this game will always stabilize at 20, or 20 FPS. And the way to see that is to go to your settings, go to graphics, go all the way down to statistics, and turn on your FPS counter. Now I'm going to show you this inside this game when we get into the game what I mean by that. So when we get into the intro screen, after we've turned off these display buttons, we're going to press the back button. You're going to go to overlay controls, toggle controls, toggle all, and those overlay buttons will be gone. Now you're going to see that we're at 60 FPS right now, but that's just rendering the way it's supposed to for the device itself. But if we get into the game itself, when it starts rendering and does its thing, you'll notice that the game will start rendering at lower frame rates. Okay. So now we're in the game, we're rendering at 20 FPS, and yes, I'm going to show you how to get rid of the square if you don't like the square. I'm going to click back, I'm going to go to settings, I'm going to go to config. Now, if we sat this game at 60 F or 60% clock speed, we're going to notice that drop in that FPS counter all the way down to almost 10. And there you go. Now you can see that it's slowing down. Now if we go back and set it back to our 100%, some of these games do need it to be overclocked to 130%. I've noticed 130% is rendering it quite well, and that's just on lower end devices. But as you can see, that jumped it right back up to where we want it to be. And you'll notice this dip if you want to mess around with these settings when you're actually in the game and you want to play the game when you're even in the overworld and stuff now to change the actual square part of the game um, that's just basically the 4.3 or 4 by 3 aspect ratio we're going to exit this emulation because we want to save these settings directly for all of the games now go to settings go to graphics settings and your aspect ratio is all up to your preference i like to force 16 by 9 stretch to fit window makes it look a little bit fat but 16 by 9 on this device looks amazing in my opinion now we will have to save those settings specifically for this game as well because we have enabled a feature for that to save now that emulated clock speed is always going to be set to that so let's go over to ocarina of time 
Click no. I just don't want to have the rumble on. And there we go. So that emulated clock speed is saved. We're at 20% or 20 FPS at the top right hand side and no slowdowns whatsoever. Now, a lot of games like Burnout, for example, they'll always run at 50 FPS and that's because that's how the game was configured. 50 FPS is great for a lot of high intense games where 20 to 30 FPS for lower games like uh, Super Mario Sunshine, for example, they also look great in my opinion and they run really well. I played a little bit of Super Mario Sunshine for a bit and didn't have any issues. So I'm just showing you just a quick gameplay with a single race of how well Burnout runs on the device as well. As you can see in the top right hand side, we're sitting at a solid FPS of 50. And when you start playing it, you'll see how well it actually plays. And it sits at that stable 50 FPS, even at the 60% CPU speed. Now I'm gonna show you something one more time here. We're gonna click back, we're gonna go to settings, go to graphic settings, or sorry, go back to config, go to advance. And I'm gonna show you just the difference if we ended up underclocking this, and it even states basically lower values make the CPU run less, but it also lowers the frame rate, but it will increase the speed of the emulation. So we're gonna go back, go back, go back, and you're gonna notice the FPS start to dip when we lower those FPS or that emulated clock speed really low. I think 20% was where I found that it starts to slow down. There it is. So yeah, 20% of the emulated clock speed lowers it down to 40 FPS. And let's do one more test. Like I said, you don't have to do this. This is just me showing you guys what happens when you actually lower the clock speed. Let's go to 10% and let's see how low that goes. So if you want to play in super slow motion at 20 FPS for a racing game, maybe this makes it easier for you because the game is still rendering at the same speed interval in its in the game itself, but you're just seeing it at a slower speed, basically. Now, overclocking it isn't really gonna do too much with this because our device is pretty powerful. So if we go to advance, turn this back on to 60%, that is the stable median for you to actually render your games. So there you go, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, share, comment below if you have any questions, because I try to answer every question I get. Bye-bye!